Great moments are born from great opportunity. And that's what you have here tonight, boys. That's what you've earned here tonight. This is it. Week 25, and you're either in your semifinal or your final matchup, and your entire season comes down to this. It's win or go home. It's do or die. You need that little edge to push you over the hump, and so here you are. Now, I can't guarantee victory, but I can guarantee that watching this video will leave you better prepared than not watching it. So as we always do, let's jump right into the Week 25 schedule. 56 games this week, which is crazy, and they're all equally spread out, which is also crazy. So schedule manipulation isn't necessarily as important as it normally is because you're going to have a bunch of your guys playing and you're not going to have to make those difficult decisions. Now, you do have an 11 game Saturday, but that's not the end of the world. We've seen a lot worse recently. Now, one other thing to note is there are 10 Saturday, Sunday back to backs that you can choose from. And there are five teams with three games between Monday and Thursday, and you see a bunch of them here. So uh, this could be the schedule play where you add a guy from one of these teams down here that play Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, drop them on Friday and pick up somebody for that weekend back to back. But they're not all created equal. The key to all of this is going to be this St. Louis weekend back to back against San Jose and Anaheim. It's the dream matchup. It's a road uh, back to back, which isn't necessarily the best. You would prefer to have that at home, but they would never do that at home. So they're on the road in San Jose and in Anaheim, two of the worst teams in the NHL that give up a ton of shots, a ton of goals. So we will cover some St. Louis Blues ads that you want to target for maybe Friday morning or Thursday night if you're in a matchup that you know is going to be tight and you need those points on the weekend. Now, the best teams to stream from for the first half are the Islanders, the Florida Panthers, and Tampa Bay, just based on strength of schedule. But the Panthers are on a four-game road trip this week. The Penguins have a three-game road trip, and so do the Lightning. So these are a couple of teams that we're looking at. We're going to look at the Rangers, the Islanders, and the Blues uh, in terms of a deep dive. But the rest of those teams, you can see the players over here. These are some of the players that are available, and they're sorted by completeness rating, if you need that. If you need uh, specifically goals, shots, power play stuff, that's kind of what the weighted rating is for. So look for the greener numbers over here. Uh, Verhage probably owned up. Uh, there's a couple of other guys that are maybe there for you. Trevor Moore, pretty good at both. Uh, he's 59% owned. But the best ad maybe would be Sam Bennett if you're looking for that front uh, you know, three and four. Uh, Bennett is 31% owned. I never understand that. And if he's if you're in a face-off league, he's even more valuable. Uh, he's extremely complete. Lots of hits, lots of shots. Uh, you know, you know what you're getting out of Sam Bennett. Brian Rust, we will touch on a little bit, but uh, he's relatively complete. He's relatively hot as well. He's 47% owned. Trevor Moore, as I just mentioned, 59% owned, dual eligible. He's one of the other guys you could add. As we move further down, Matt Roy, defenseman for hits and blocks, things like that. Philip Deneau is day-to-day. -day. He's 21% owned. He'd be another decent ad for that front uh, half of the schedule. Definitely want to have him for this San Jose game if you're doing that. Uh, and then down here, you've got Tarasenko at 51%. That's a little bit high considering what he provides. You have Raquel at 27%. Uh, then, you know, I would also mention for some of these Pittsburgh guys, the Rangers, they're very difficult to score on, especially for Pittsburgh. They seem to have a lot of trouble uh, with the Rangers, and the Rangers are rolling right now, as we'll look at in just a second. Uh, but then you also have a couple of other guys that you want to pay attention to. Nick Paul, he's been one of those guys that every now and then for Tampa Bay, he uh, gets on fire. Sometimes he's on that first power play unit, and if he is, you definitely want exposure there. You have Aaron Ekblad at 53%. He could be a nice defenseman for you in a week where they're playing three and four in the front half, uh, and then you drop him before this Boston game. That could be an interesting game, uh, all things considered. That could be a you know, potential you know, Eastern Conference playoff matchup or semifinal matchup. Um, but further down here, Sorelli is red hot right now. Just had a two-goal game. He has three goals and an assist in his last three games, and he's only 5% owned. He could be a nice ad for you as well. And then down here, Duclair, 34%. I've been mentioning him in each of the last two weekly videos. He's been really, really good since coming over to Tampa Bay. He could be another option for you if you're looking for a goal-scoring winger, uh, somebody getting you top nine exposure. But if you're looking for that perfect Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday schedule, and to be honest with you, not the best opponents. They're not all terrible. Some of them are borderline playoff teams. In fact, most of them are borderline playoff teams, but a lot of these teams are now officially out. So the Rangers have a pretty decent schedule with that Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. 
And as I mentioned last week, the guy you would want to pick up from the Rangers is Alexi Lafreniere. If you listened to me last week, then you benefited from a two-goal game earlier in the week and then a hat-trick and a five-point game last night against Arizona. Now, he's still only 45% owned. I believe his ownership is ticking up by the hour, so you might want to get out in front of that right now. Dual position eligible is nice as well. And he's been on that top line with Panarin and Trocek the entire year, so you know the line assignment is good. He's on the second power play unit. You're probably not going to get power play points out of him, but every now and then that second unit does score. And they're playing a bunch of teams that you know might give them some power plays and don't have the best penalty kills. So there could be an opportunity there for some PP2 time and some points there. Speaking of PP2, you've got Capo Caco. He's been playing pretty well since uh, the All-Star, I'm sorry, yeah, I guess the All-Star break, but mainly the trade deadline. He's been playing really well since then. This third line is Kako, Cooley, and Wenberg. They're very effective five on five. He obviously doesn't get a lot of power play time either. Three points in his last three games. He's only 2% owned. So if you're looking at you know a second overall pick who hasn't necessarily had the season that Lafreniere had, but he's at 2% ownership. If you're in a deep league, you could do a lot worse than that. If you need hits, specifically hits, and every now and then you'll get a goal, Will Cooley, 3.16 hits per game on the season. And as we bring up his player hub, you can see here the hitting, 95th percentile in hits on the season. He's been one of the top 15 or 20 hitters all season long, and this line is very productive five on five, so this could be an opportunity for you if you're in a deep league or if you need those hits this week in a category league matchup, uh, he could definitely be of use to you. Now, another guy who we I've talked about every now and then, but he hasn't been in the lineup enough to, to warrant talking about him much, is Zach Jones. Now, if you look at the file, it's nothing crazy here, but he has been improving week over week. Uh, Gustafson is still out, so he is still in the top six, technically speaking. A goal, an assist, two points in his last three games, 11 shots and three hits. He's been one of those offensive players. He seems to gel really well with guys like Panarin who can move the puck with him. He gets a bunch of shots. Uh, the shots aren't always there because he's in different roles sometimes, but he does like to shoot. So shots are one of the main features of his file. And at 0% ownership, uh, this is a very deep league play if you're looking for a defenseman for those uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday nights. But if you're looking for a defenseman with some peripherals, Braden Schneider, he has, uh, Truba has come back. He you know, Truba was back in the Arizona game on Saturday, so Schneider's ice time will diminish. However, uh, he's still getting 16, 17 minutes a night, three hits per game, 2.42 blocks per game over the last seven games. So you're getting those peripherals, and every now and then he'll throw you a point, which is nice to have as well. He's only 2% owned. Just crazy that all of these guys are under 3% ownership and they all get regular ice time. So any of these guys could be options in a deeper league, but obviously if you're in a shallower league and you have access to Lafreniere, he would be the number one ad for this week. Now, there's another way that you could play the schedule that we did sort of mention before, and that is trying to load up for the front half of the week and then add those two guys from St. or you know, add those uh, two games from St. Louis later in the week. So if you want that best optimized schedule for the front half the islanders are where it's at so you look at their schedule philly is not going to be an easy game they're pushing for a playoff spot they've got washington creeping on them and they've got uh, some competition in both the wild card race and the third uh, position in the metro so they definitely have to play well the islanders are technically uh, i believe they are still technically able to make the playoffs they're probably not going to do it but that should be a very competitive game and then they come back home and play Chicago the next night. That should be a nice game to pick up some points if you're looking at a guy like Paul Mary uh, or Pajot, who we can talk about here. And then we also have this road game against Columbus. Columbus isn't terrible, and they've been playing a little bit better offensively lately, but this should still be a relatively high-scoring game. Some of these, you know, there could be a bunch of different high-scoring uh, games in here. This game against Nashville, you probably don't want access to as Nashville is very hot. Uh, and they're one of the best teams over the past month and a half plus. So starting off, JG Pajo, 6% owned, a goal and assist, two points in his last three games, plus eight shots, nine hits, and five blocks. So he's a guy who does a little bit of everything. He obviously wins a ton of face-offs. So if you're in a face-off league and he's out there on the wire for whatever reason, that would be a good opportunity to grab him. As we look at his player hub, you can see what he's good at. Hits, 2.47 hits per game and one block per game, 96 percentile there. So you're getting that peripheral floor and then he's been producing lately as well. 
Uh, and at only 6% ownership, he should be there for you in most league sizes. Uh, he probably would not be your best offensive player. If you're looking for that, let's jump to the bottom. You can find Kyle Palmieri at 14% ownership, single position right winger, which isn't the best. But if you look at his shot volume, it's not bad. 2.6 shots per game, 87th percentile there. Uh, he's 85th percentile in goals. He's got 24 on the season, but he's got nine in his last 14 games. And he's been scoring pretty much every two to three games. So it's not like he's getting three goals here and then going cold for a week and a half. He's been scoring pretty much consistently once or twice a week. So that is helpful to have as opposed to a guy who's going to get you three goals. One, you know, like a Victor Olofsson is the prime example of that, where he'll go off for two or three goals and then go quiet for 15 games. That's not Kyle Palmieri. And you're getting the shot volume, 40 shots in his last 14 games. And he does hit a little bit. So 1.1 hits per game, 18 hits in the last 14 tracks with that as well. And he gets some power play time. He's got 17 power play points on the season. So those are some offensive options. If you're looking for a defenseman, Ryan Pulak, really nice pickup. I picked him up over the weekend and he scored a nice goal, uh, which helped me out in my matchup. 2.6 blocks per game, 1.9 hits per game. That's what you're getting in terms of a peripheral floor. And then he's got four points in his last five, a goal and three assists and a power play point. And if you look at his trend, he's been trending up basically back since the early part of January. So He's been uh, you know, gaining momentum as the season goes on, even though the Islanders are not necessarily in a playoff push anymore. This could be an opportunity to pick up one of their other defensemen. You're not getting anywhere near Dobson. This would be your next best bet in terms of offensive production from the back end. If you're looking for just hits, as I mentioned previously, you could try Will Cooley, but one of the tried and true guys is Cal Clutterbuck. He's at 98th percentile in hits, 3.42 hits per game. That's what you're getting for, uh, out of Clutterbuck. He also has two goals in his last four games. It was a two-goal game, so he's one of those guys that you're not going to count on for goal production. Every now and then, he'll throw it in there, and they do have a really nice bottom six. So this is an opportunity to grab a guy who's going to get you those hits, 15 hits in his last four games, and it's been consistent over the entire season. Uh, and then you're going to get three of these games here in the front half of the back to or the front back to back, and then this game against Columbus. So this is an opportunity to grab some hits in the front half of the week, and then see where you're at in your matchup. If you need something else, you can drop them on Friday morning and pick somebody else up for the weekend. But that's going to do it for the Isles ads. Up next, we'll cover one of the most important parts of this whole play, and that is the St. Louis Blues ads. Now, as you can see at the bottom, that weekend back-to-back -back is what you're looking for. They have that home game against the Oilers on Monday. Probably don't want anything uh, out of that game. And then you also have the road game in Nashville. Probably don't want anything in that game either because those are two very difficult teams, both playoff teams, and two of the hottest teams in the NHL. So... If you're looking at anybody from this list, you're probably targeting them for that Saturday, Sunday. And we'll start it off with Jake Neighbors. He's been on fire. So he's got six goals, nine points, three power play points, and 24 hits in his last nine games, which is really, really crazy that his ownership is only 27% and he's dual eligible. So that doesn't make a lot of sense. As we pull up his hub, he's 88th percentile in goal production, which is really good for a young player, 26 goals on the season is really nice for Jake Neighbors. 84th percentile in power play production. The shot volume is relatively low considering the amount of goals he scores, but the hits are really nice to have. 1.78 hits per game, and you can see that with the 24 hits in his last nine games. So just around uh, a little bit under 2.4 hits per game over that span, which is a little bit above his season long average, which is nice to see. And then if you look at the trend, basically since early December, he's been trending in the right direction, had a little bit of a downward stretch, into early March and then bouncing back up now up to a 70 on the completeness rating. So he's relatively complete, getting some hits and blocks, getting some power play production. Assists are a little bit low, but you're looking for goal totals and uh, you know the hits production out of him as well. Now, another guy, if he's available, he's probably not. Pavel Buchnevich, he's going to be one of your better ads this week if you can find it. Not a lot of hits and blocks, but you're looking at much better offensive production. 91st percentile in goals. Uh, he's got 26 on the season, so for a center or center left wing, that's pretty good. Two goals, seven assists, nine points in his last seven, so he's still red hot. 
four power play points in that span. He's 85th percentile on the power play, and his shot volume is much better than Jake Neighbors at 2.65 shots per game. He was trending downward for a while, and that is something that is a little bit concerning because it started back in early February and ended basically two weeks ago. But he has jumped up in the right direction, and it wasn't, uh, you know, it was a big drop off from 73 down to 68, a five point drop, but he's back in and around that 70 uh, completeness rating range, which is uh, probably a little bit, you know, you would like to see his uh, ownership come down if he's, you know, only doing that, but he is relatively hot with those assists and the nine points in seven games. So if he's available, I would definitely go out and get him. If he's not available, Braden Shen has not been as productive. Six points in eight games is not bad. It's not necessarily a point per game or above a point per game like the other two guys. But what you are getting out of uh, Shen is the hitting. 2.15 hits per game on average on the season. The shot volume is a little bit better than Neighbors, a little bit worse than Buchnevich. The power play production is basically mid-pack, 76 percentile. That uh, also factors in guys who don't play power play. So in terms of power play production, 0.14 power play points per game is pretty much middle of the pack for that. But he's got six points in his last eight, along with 21 shots and then 15 hits. So just a shade under three shots per game in that span and a little bit over two hits per game. So you're getting a nice peripheral floor out of him. Both, all of these guys are dual position eligible and they all have varying degrees of ownership. So it's 27, 68, 31%. Now, if you're looking for just peripherals, Colton Pareko would probably be your guy. As you can see his trend, he's been trending up since December. So it's been really nice to see over the entire season. The blocks are his main uh, feature, 97th percentile there, 2.64 blocks per game. Getting some hits, 1.42 hits per game. And over the last seven games, it's been 2.14 shots, 1.71 hits, and 2.29 blocks per game. So a little bit lower in terms of blocks, a little bit higher in terms of hits, and a little bit higher in terms of shots. So he's been playing a little bit better over the last seven games compared to his season long average. And he's 91st percentile for defenseman goal scoring at 10 goals on the season, uh, which is really nice because every now and then he will throw a nice goal in there for you. And if you're in a points league where you get those uh, points for peripherals and then you get the you know extra po uh, two or three points for a goal, that is really nice to see. If you can get that, this would be the perfect opportunity because these teams give up a ton of goals. Now, what you're not going to get uh, you're not going to get goals out of Justin Falk. So he's 53% owned. I did want to mention him here because he is relatively complete at a 75. 1.4 hits, 1.79 blocks, 2.14 shots per game. And then the assists are the main feature over the last 10 games. Seven assists and then three of those on the power play. I believe he's one of the two power play quarterbacks. I'm pretty sure it's him and Krug uh, with him getting a little bit more of the power play time. But uh, if he's available, he's probably not as, uh, you know, good of a peripheral floor as Colton Pareko, and you're not going to get goals. So if you know, factor that in, if you're just looking for some decent peripherals and some assists, Falk would be another option for you. But the ownership is a little bit high. I would maybe tend to go Pareko over the two, you know, between the two of them. But that's going to do it for our look at the individual teams. As I mentioned before, and uh, we can go back right now, actually, there are a bunch of other teams here that have the front loaded uh, three and four, you've got Florida. Uh, you could potentially, I mean, you can see Bennett here. You can potentially go Lundell. There's a couple of other guys you can go, Luce Dorenin. Uh With Pittsburgh, there's not a lot in terms of offensive production. You could try Michael Bunting. You could try Raquel. Rust is your best ad at 47%. Um, and then with LA, there's a couple of guys that you could go to if Byfield's available. He would be an option. Uh, Deneau, Moore, even Victor Arvidsson. Um, Arvidsson with a goal and two assists since coming back from his injury. And that line, as I've mentioned it a number of times on the channel, Deneau, Arvidsson, and Moore, they were very good last year. They've been very good for a number of years now. When they're together, they're very comfortable with each other. So any of those guys would be good waiver pickups this week as well. And then with Tampa, you have guys like Sorelli you can go to, Nick Paul you can go to, Duclair probably, uh, and even some defensemen, maybe a Matt Dumba if you need something there. Um, but there's a number of different options for this play where you're getting the three games at the front end and then the two at the back end. You get five games out of one roster spot with an ad. Uh, and then, again, you're looking for a lot of offensive production, as we just mentioned with those St. Louis guys. But up next, we're going to cover the goaltending because, as I mentioned, there are 10 weekend back-to-backs, so there's a bunch of streaming options. 
We'll start it off with a guy I have no data on because he hasn't played an NHL game yet, and that is Ivan Fedotov. So 2% owned. He's a guy, if, you don't, if you're don't, if you not familiar with the story, uh, the Flyers owned his rights. He was playing in the KHL. They wouldn't let him come over. They said he dodged military service or whatever. He had to go back and play in the KHL again. They just released him over the past week. He's now with Philadelphia, and they've pretty much been struggling to find a backup with Carter Hart out and Arison playing most of the games. They can't really rely on uh, any of their other goaltenders, so they're looking at Fedotov now. Uh, he might get this back-to-back -back game at Columbus on Saturday. So they got the back-to-back -back Friday at Buffalo, Saturday at Columbus. He's putting up pretty decent numbers in the KHL, 2.37 goals against, 914 save percentage. So this could be a shot in the dark. If you're throwing a dart at the dartboard uh, in a deep league, this could be an option for you. Obviously, Philadelphia needs to win games to get into the playoffs, so they'll be very careful with where they roll him out, and they would probably give him a start that they're comfortable that he can win. So that would be the optimal uh, you know, start for him if he was playing against Columbus on Saturday. But another guy that we want to talk about here, and this is a theme, we've talked about him a couple weeks in a row, Eustace Anunin. Um, not sure exactly what the pronunciation is, Anunin, Ananin. Uh, but when we pull up uh, his numbers, you can look at over the last six games, He's been really, really good, and he's got two shutouts and another game where he came in relief. Uh, that was last game against Nashville. At the time he came in, uh, he was they were down 4-1, to one, I believe, and they ended up winning the game. He gave up no goals and was excellent in that game. So basically three shutouts in his last six games. They have a back-to-back -back Thursday at Minnesota, Friday at Edmonton. If they give him that Minnesota game, that would be the place to spot start him. You look at his hub, going from a 17 back in February, all the way up now to a 54. And that's with basically no game volume, no games played volume, hardly any wins just because of the fact that he hasn't played any games and the total saves are pretty far down. But if you look at the numbers, 2.2 goals against, 932 save percentage, uh, 7.6 above expected. So everything that you like to see out of a backup goaltender, that's what you're getting out of Anunin. He's been better than Georgiev basically over the past month and a half. Uh, and they had, had to pull Georgiev in that game last night and put Anunin in to get the win. So this is a developing situation. I don't think he becomes the starter, but it is something that you need to pay attention to. As we're in our playoffs, he's a very quality backup at this point, and you can rely on him for some starts. There will probably be that one uh, between one of these two games. Now, another back-to-back -back that we have to talk about, and this is an option uh, that was better last year than it is this year. That's Scott Wedgwood. So three wins in his last four games is nice. The 2.08 goals against is nice. The 8.93 save percentage is not. So he had two games in there where he was really good and two games in there where he was really bad. And that's the problem with uh, with Wedgwood is, you know, you used to get very consistent defensive play in front of him and he was really good. He was above expected, but he's below expected right now. The team defense is still really good, so that's why you're relatively comfortable putting him in there, especially if it's against Chicago. So Saturday at Chicago, Sunday at Colorado, uh, I would imagine they give him this game. That would be the optimal place to grab him and spot start him on the weekend if you're looking for some goaltending categories uh, before your week ends as you're trying to come back in your matchup. Another option for you is Calvin Pickard. Uh, he's been really good all season long. They pretty much found their backup goaltender. I mentioned this previously, Campbell was not working out. Pickard comes up 11 wins, 2.24 goals against, 9.15 save percentage, and a shutout on the year. That's really decent for a backup. He is three uh, saves above expected. The team defense is really good at 85th percentile. He did take a little bit of a dip here in the last week, but overall, uh, going from a 29 back in November up to a 60 now, getting a little bit more game volume, starting those games that they can uh, you know, put him in and be comfortable that he's going to get them uh, a quality start. And then on top of that, you're looking at this back-to-back. -back. You've got Friday versus Colorado. You don't want him there. Saturday at Calgary. Calgary's not a bad team, and they have some offensive weapons. It's probably not as good of a spot start as this Saturday game against Chicago for Wedgwood, but it is a decent option because they do have a really good team defense in front of them. Obviously, Edmonton's a good team. Uh, he's only 17% owned, so a lot of these guys are available in most league sizes. Now, a guy who's probably not available in all league sizes is Anthony Stolarz, and I've been talking about him a lot of weeks on this uh, exact segment. So, 26% owned, 14 wins on the year, 2.02 goals against, 925 save percentage with a shutout. 
15 sa goals saved above expected uh, is really nice to have from a backup. And then on top of that, 88th percentile in terms of team defense. So you're very comfortable with the team in front of him. Obviously, Florida is one of the best teams in the league. And then you look at the place that they're probably going to start him is Tuesday at Montreal. Uh, so that would be a better start than Toronto, where you're obviously going up against Matthews, Marner, Nylander, etc. So Montreal is no pushover, and they do have that top line playing really well. Suzuki, Caulfield, Slavkovsky, really nice surprise for Slavkovsky this year coming in and playing really well. But with all that said, this should be a win for Florida. Uh, they're a playoff team. They're a wagon right now. They should get the win here. And this should be a quality start from Stolarz if you can find him on the wire. Now, kind of the opposite of that is Dave Riddick. And we do have to talk about it because they do have this back-to-back -back that you might want exposure to because it's San Jose. So it's kind of a theme here. We're looking to pick on San Jose and Anaheim. And that's what we're going to do here with Dave Riddick as he's potentially going to get that Thursday game against San Jose. Uh, even that game against Seattle wouldn't be the worst to spot start him, but this, Se uh, this San Jose game would be the one that I would favor. And in his last couple games, two shutouts and then two games where he gave up more than four goals, or four goals exactly. So you're kind of getting a mixed bag out of Dave Riddick. It's not the safest play, but the opponent makes it worth mentioning here. And he is still 12.1 uh, above expected. That comes from mainly when he was the starter, when he took over for Cam Talbot for a number of weeks there, and he was really good in that stretch. And you can see here he went from a 51 all the way up to a 68, but basically hasn't played a lot over the past couple weeks because Talbot has taken the net back, and he is number four on the goalie, rate, uh, goalie ratings, goalie rankings, whatever you want to call it. So Riddick could be an option for you. It's a little bit more risky just because of his performance, but it's less risky when you factor in the opponent. Now, there are a couple of other goaltenders we want to talk about here. We'll start it off with Mark andre Fleury. And this is a guy who, uh, you know, I've owned for a couple of weeks now in the Data Draft League. And he was very good for a stretch. He had like four or five wins uh, in a row and was playing really well. And it's kind of tapered off since then. So his numbers have been really bad over the past week or two. That's why I didn't list them there. But you do have that Sunday game at Chicago. So that would be an opportunity. If you don't have any goaltenders left, if you're you know one of those guys with Demko or something like that, and you just want to spot start goaltenders, take a look at who's playing San Jose and Chicago. You could go Riddick against San Jose. You could go uh, Mark Andre Fleury against Chicago on Sunday, and then if we look back here, you could go with the other game on Saturday, Wedgwood against Chicago. So that is an option for you if you just want to spot start the guys who are playing against the worst teams in the league. That could be an angle for you if you're looking for goaltending performance basically off the waiver wire. The problem is, despite his terrible play, he's 57% owned. So that's crazy. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend... I mean, if you can find him for that Sunday game, it's worth it. If you can't, you can probably find Kevin Lankinen on the wire. 2% owned. Nobody has him, despite the fact that they are... Nashville is one of the best teams in the NHL over the past month, month and a half. However far back you want to go. Two wins in his last four starts, 2.13 goals against, 941 save percentage. Neither of these teams are bad. They both have pretty good offenses. Devils are probably a little bit more potent, especially with Jack Hughes healthy and everything else. Uh, all of the offensive firepower, that's not their problem. Their problem is defense and goaltending, which they've seemed to solve their goaltending, which we'll get into in just a second. But this Islanders game, whichever game they're going to give Lankin in, they're going to have to give him one. Um, it's not necessarily the safest start just because of the opponent, but you are getting really good team exposure right now, despite the fact that it doesn't show up on the goalie hub. You can obviously tell Nashville is playing really good defensive hockey, uh, and they're getting a lot of results. They're getting tons of wins over the last month and a half. So this is an opportunity to grab him at 2%. And then in terms of the Devils goaltending, we're not going to touch on, you know, goaltending, you know, each one individually, but Jake Allen's been pretty good. Uh, three wins in his last five. 919 save percentage. This is over the last two weeks that you're looking at here. Kakinen with a shutout in the one game that he played. And the reason we're mentioning them here is because they play, uh, they each are going to play two games next week. So they have Tuesday versus Pittsburgh at home, Wednesday at the Rangers at the Garden, then Saturday in Ottawa, and Sunday home against Nashville. So each of these goalies is going to play twice. If you're, again, one of those guys who has no goaltending right now, you could probably pick up both of these guys and get four starts out of the entire week. And they're both available on the wire, both under 20% ownership, I believe. 
uh, last I checked. So both of them should be there for you, and they may not be the best option because of the team defense and everything that we just mentioned in terms of New Jersey, but uh, if you need just raw numbers, starts and saves, you can see here a 36 save shutout. Jake Allen was getting 35 to 40 shots against per game. If total saves is what you're looking for, you can get both of these guys and rack up the total saves this week. Last but not least, Jonas Johansson has hardly played. Uh, and this is, you know, a guy that I had earlier in the season as I was waiting for Vasilevsky. He was obviously the starter back in October, and it's been going downhill since, but mainly just because he hasn't played. This is a unique feature where Vasilevsky normally plays a ton of games, but he didn't play at all as he was injured for the first two, two and a half months of the season. So now they're just loading up Vasilevsky with any game that they can to try to get into the playoffs, which is good if you own Vasilevsky. But they do have a back-to-back -back Wednesday at Toronto, Thursday at Montreal, and they're going to have to use their backup goaltender for one of those games. And it'll probably be Johansson Thursday against Montreal. So that would be an opportunity to start him. And he's been good in his last two starts. 1.48 goals against 942 save percentage in those two starts, despite the fact that they're basically three or four weeks apart. So he hasn't played a lot. He's going to have to focus very hard to get into the game and, you know, feel it. Uh, a lot of guys get a lot of their, you know, performance out of a rhythm and being in games, you know, game in, game out. Guys like Berdur playing 70 games, they they feel it. They, they you know, feel the puck coming at them all the time. So they get into the game quicker. Johansson's going to have to be the opposite. He's going to have to get into the game quick. But uh, if you can, you know, find him on the waiver wire, 12% ownership, that's not bad. Uh, and Tampa Bay is playing really good hockey over the past month. So these are some options for you, just the back-to-backs. There's obviously other goaltenders we could talk about that are playing pretty well. Um, but we're going to move it on now to the player ads for the week. We mentioned a couple in the first part with the schedule. We're also going to mention some of the hottest players in the NHL right now. Now, some of these guys are red hot, and that will start it off with Nick Bugstad, who is currently red hot. Six-game point streak four game goal streak and he's got six goals four assists 10 points in his last nine so everything pointing in the right direction you can see that on his trend going from a 68 to a 72 basically a vertical line over the past couple of weeks here and on top of that you're getting one and a half hits per game a couple of blocks here and there shot volume is decent at above you know 2.18 shots per game is not bad you'd like to see around three but uh, pretty consistent, pretty uh, decent over every category. So getting some power play time here, six power play points on the year, uh, some assists to go along with 21 goals on the year. So a little bit of everything in terms of Bukestad. He is a single position center, and that is a theme with a lot of these guys. They're all single position, which isn't the best. However, these guys are that hot that you might want to think about it. And if you're in a league with faceoffs, Bukestad does take a couple of those and win those as well. Now, another guy we have to talk about, and I've talked about him uh, last week, is Gus Nyquist. And he has been one of the best underrated pickups all season long. So if you're looking at the numbers, eight game point streak, 12 points in those eight games, five goals, seven assists, three power play points. But he quietly also has 68 points in 74 games for Nashville, which nobody seems to be talking about. Now, you're not getting a lot of peripherals, not a lot of hits or blocks out of him, but 90th percentile on the power play, uh, 95th percentile for assists, and one of the things that you're getting is exposure to Philip Forsberg, which is the main party piece, and then you're also getting exposure to Ryan O'Reilly. He's on the top line. I believe he's top power play, so a, a lot of things pointing in the right direction for Gus Nyquist. He's 46% owned, but in a 12-team league, you may be able to find that on the waiver wire, and if you can, he would probably be your best ad just in terms of who's red hot right now and he has been for a number of games now eight game point streak and it goes even further back than that so very consistent producer especially with assists over the last couple of months basically the entire season uh, but another guy who's been relatively productive is Brian Rust and he was a guy I had in my face-off league which is counterintuitive he doesn't take face-offs and almost every one of my wingers in that league does take face-offs but he's productive enough to keep on that team because of how well he's played. So 10 points in his last nine games, six goals, four assists, two power play points. And you can see here on his uh, trend. So basically, uh, what is this? Around mid-January, all the way up now to the end of March, he's been climbing from a 73 up to an 81. Shot volume is excellent. 3.09 shots per game, 
94th percentile in goals per game. He's missed a bunch of games, 24 goals in 53 games. That puts him on pace for at least 40 in an 82 game season where he's not hurt. So uh, this is an interesting file because not a lot of people recognize the per game numbers. He's getting a couple of blocks, but that's not the main reason you get him. It's goals and shot volume. The points are pretty good as well, 0.87 points per game on the season. So 47% ownership is pretty accurate considering what his production has been. Between the two of them, Nyquist is a little bit hotter and I would want access to Forsberg as opposed to Rust, but Rust plays with Crosby and Crosby is also red hot. But if you can't get any, any of them, you could try Logan Cooley. This is a guy that I started the season with on a couple of different teams. He's a young player, so he's been in and out, you know, hot and cold. Uh, and right now he's been relatively hot. So five points in his last two games, four goals, uh, one assist and a power play point in that stretch. And the power play numbers, they were very good to start the season. He was on power play one. Not sure if he's still there, but if he is, that's a really nice exposure, especially playing with Clayton Keller and some of the other guys that they have on that unit. At 13% ownership, if you're in a deeper league and he's available, uh, it's maybe not the best team exposure, but this could be one of those situations where uh, some of those bad teams that aren't necessarily Chicago, San Jose, Anaheim, this is not a great team, but they did just put up five against the New York Rangers Saturday night and Cooley factored in on a bunch of those. So this is a team that can still score. They can still play. They compete. Uh, and they're not going to be as much of a pushover as some of those other teams. And you can find him in a lot of different league sizes. Now, another option for you would be Jonathan Drouin. And he's a guy who's getting a ton of power play production. And that's what you're looking for if you're picking up a Colorado Avalanche player. So single position left wing, I believe. 10 points in his last seven games, three of those on the power play, three goals, seven assists, very productive. Uh, if you look on the season, the main thing that you're getting him for is the power play production. 18 power play points in 71 games is really good. You also have 15 goals. That's not the main reason you get him. The assists are pretty good uh, as he does have 33 assists on the season. So shot volume is a little bit low for me and you're not getting any peripherals. But if you just want that power play exposure to guys like McKinnon, Rantanen, Makar, etc. Uh, Nachushkin was day-to-day -day a little bit last week. Uh, Lekkonen could see some power play time, but every now and then they do put Drew in there. And if he's there, you definitely want access to him. Now up next is a guy, and I didn't really talk about it, but if you're in a week uh, where your playoffs are week 25 and 26, pretty much everybody's in playoffs at this point in the season. Um, but for week 25 and 26, the number one team that you're going to want to add from is Edmonton. And there's not a lot that you can find on the waiver wire because obviously all of their top guys are who you'd want and they're all owned up. But Adam Henrique is one of the guys that you can add. He's dual position eligible. He's only 25% owned. Three goals in his last four games along with 11 hits and five blocks. And if you're in a face-off league, he does take face-offs as well. So this is a sneaky add. If you can find it on the waiver wire, uh, this would be a hold that you would probably want for 25 and 26 throughout the rest of the season. Adam Henry could be really nice there for you. Uh, Edmonton does play the most amount of games in that stretch. They have 10 games total and six of them are on quote unquote light nights. Now there's no real light nights this week. Maybe that one five game night in the middle of the week, but uh, for week 26, they play a lot of light night games. So that could be a nice play for you if you're looking for uh, an Edmonton Oiler ad. Obviously, Eckholm would be another guy that you could potentially get, but his ownership has skyrocketed in the last couple of weeks as he's been very good. So this could be one of the few forwards that you would want access to and can get access to at 25% ownership. Now, last but not least, we have a guy that I was riding for a lot of uh, the last week and a half or so, Philip Kurashev. And this is interesting because, again, I mentioned it in previous videos, he's getting you exposure to Connor Bedard, which is what you want. Nine points in his last seven games, three goals, six assists. So you're getting excellent power play exposure, 89th percentile there, 92nd percentile in terms of assists. You can see his trend skyrocketing, and it goes back further than just those seven games. Seven goals, 10 assists, 17 points, seven power play points in his last 14 games. So basically over the last month plus, he's been very productive over a point per game and he's 7% owned. So if you made it to this point in the video, I'm rewarding you with one of your best deep league ads in Philip Kurashev uh, and he's 7% owned. He's probably there for you even in a 14, maybe a 16 team league. 
So Philip Kurashev getting you that Bedard exposure. Uh, you obviously don't want a ton of Chicago exposure, but if you have uh, you know any light night game or any games where you can potentially get him in, he's a single position center, so the positional flexibility isn't there, but he's been really productive, enough to mention here and hold for week 25. But that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully, I've covered everything that you need. Hopefully, you guys can pull out your wins. This week, as I'm speaking, we're wrapping up week 24, and a lot of you are in crucial playoff matchups that come down to this one game, Vancouver at Anaheim, which has been very difficult to find guys on the waiver wire for. Hopefully, you can pull that out and head into week 25 and help to try to win your championship. That's what I'm hoping to get for you guys. Uh, if I've helped you at all, let me know in the comments section below. If you have any questions, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you again next week for the final video of the 23-24 season.